This is Dr. Lauren Kilroy Eubanks, Smart History Khan Academy article on Miguel Cabrera's portrait of Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz. Miguel Cabrera's posthumous portrait of Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz from 1648 to 1695 is a famous depiction of the esteemed Mexican nun and writer. Considered the first feminist of the Americas, Sor Juana lived as a nun of the Hieronymite order named for Saint Jerome in 17th century Mexico. Rather than marry, she chose to become a nun so that she could pursue her intellectual interests. She corresponded with scientists, theologians, and many literary intellectuals in Mexico and abroad. She wrote poetry and plays that became internationally famous and even engaged in theological debates. Born to a Creole family in 1648, Sor Juana was a child prodigy. At the age of 15, she amazed people at court by excelling at an oral exam that tested her knowledge of physics, philosophy, theology, and mathematics. She came to live as a lady-in-waiting in the house of the viceroy, the substitute or representative for the Spanish king in Mexico. Shortly afterwards, she chose to become a nun instead of Mary. She entered the Carmelite convent in 1667, but left a year later to join the Hieronymite order in 1669, and in the process gained intellectual freedom. The Hieronymite order allowed her to host intellectual gatherings and to live a comfortable life. In 1690, she became involved in an ecclesiastical dispute between the bishops of Mexico City and Puebla. She responded to the criticism she received as a woman writer, which culminated in one of her most famous works, The Answer, from 1691. This work defended her right as a woman to write and to be a scholar. At one, she claimed that, I do not study in order to write, nor far less in order to teach, which would be boundless arrogance in me, but simply to see whether by studying I may become less ignorant. This is my answer, and these are my feelings. Despite her eloquent defense, the church forced her to relinquish her literary pursuits and even her library. When she sold her library and musical and scientific instruments, she wrote a document that renounced her learning, which ended with, I, Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, the worst in the world, signed in her own blood. After giving up her intellectual pursuits, she cared for the infirm during an epidemic, but soon she fell sick and passed away. Miguel Cabrera positions Sor Juana in such a way that the portrait insists on her status as an intellectual. He never actually met Sor Juana, so he likely based his image of her on earlier portraits of her, possibly even some self-portraits. Cabrera likely modeled this painting on images of male scholars seated at their desks. Most importantly, he possibly found inspiration in depictions of Saint Jerome, the patron saint of Sor Juana's religious order. Images often portray Saint Jerome seated at a desk within a study, surrounded by books and instruments of learning. In many ways, this is a typical known portrait of 18th century Mexico. Sor Juana wears the habit of her religious order, the Hieronymites. She also wears an escudo de monja, or nun's badge, on her chest underneath her chin. Escudos de monja were often painted, occasionally woven, and they usually displayed the Virgin Mary. Sor Juana's escudo shows the Annunciation, the moment in which the archangel Gabriel informs Mary that she will bear the Son of God. Her left hand toys with a rosary, while she turns a page of an open book with her right hand. The book is a text by St. Jerome, the saint after whom her religious order was named. Cabrera's portrait differs from other nun portraits in several important ways. She looks towards us, her gaze direct and assertive, as she sits at a desk, surrounded by her library and instruments of learning. The library here includes books on philosophy, natural science, theology, and mythology, and history, and so it reflects the types of works in Sor Juana's own library. Writing implements rest on the table, a clear allusion to Sor Juana's written works and intellectual pursuits. The rosary, a sign of her religious life, is juxtaposed with items signifying her intellectual life. The books, the desk, the quills, and inkwell aid in conveying her intellectual status. The red curtain, common in elite portraiture of the period, also confers upon her a high status.